Except, Neeraj, did you know while getting into season two what you did and didn't want to do differently? I mean, Neeraj, you were new, you were new to the to the setup, but were that something when that I you said yes, I didn't know about the scale going to be this much, and I was really a fan of season one. weren't you, you weren't you the first choice director for season one? I mean, you I were, knew right? about it, but I, I was in it, but I didn't know the scale of it is going to be so large. You know, I, I had no idea. If for me, it's pretty much the same doing season one, season two. Little, I think it's the longest I've ever played a role. Right. You know, in terms of days, so there was a comfort that came with that, and that it's like the ultimate rehearsal. Um, you know, where you get really, really comfortable with the outfit, the clothes, the kara, and everything becomes part of you. Um, and you know, just on good form for season two, that's how I felt. What did Neeraj bring that was different in terms of an energy? Um, you know, the, I, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll use the analogy. It's like a, a director some, is much, I think, like a captain mm. of a cricket team, for example. Um, you know, a director is the leader. He's the person who sets the tone for the kind of attitude on set. There's many things apart from direction. You know, there's a there's a um, subliminal thing also. There's a the way you're made to feel. My father said, you know, that people normally function about 50%. I don't know if that's true of actors, but a good captain can get you up to 90% and, you know, 99 or something, which is not where one normally functions. He's a really, really nice guy and he wears his cap really lightly, um, sings songs, makes fun. It's really, and very, very sharp and intelligent. So I feel like the work is completely handled and, and he's watching every line really carefully and directing really carefully and well. But apart from that, it's the kindness and the generosity as a person that I think his whole crew and cast will just, you know, walk through fire for him. Um, so there's all that. What did you say about Vedi? What Malcolm name liya kabhi? Inspector, I'm done here. To both of you, do you feel like a different personality in that seat will reflect in the tone of the show? I mean, to an extent, yeah, to an extent, but also not because the kind of language and, and, and the zone they've gone into, I don't know if some people have agreed with me, some people haven't, but I think a piece of film has the director's personality all over it. I think they have the same personality, the film they direct and the, the kind of person they are, I feel. Actually, uh, taking from what you just said, actually there's beyond the action and cut. I mean, there's a lot happens beyond that. Sure. I think that is what, for me, a lot of, lot larger part of direction is because how do you bring in the crew? How do you keep them inspired? How do you keep them all together? And the research and everything, and then action, and between the action cut, uh, that, I think, plays a larger part in how to, I guess. But there, I mean, obviously there'll be a tone, like he'll say, do that a little more, do that a little, his take on, you know, how a person would scream in anguish right. or how a person would cry in pain or in love or, you know, how a person would look at a woman he's in love with or is attracted to. All that tone and attitude is formed by, by say the like director. what we do, uh, we, we have this thing called Code Bibinka. We say this Code Bibinka. So oh. I've instructed all the crew members, all my ladies, everyone. There's a, there's a note that I've written, Code Bibinka means that uh, nobody talks to the actors, only when required. Uh, talk quiet, uh, talk si quietly, no sound on the set, nobody does chillam chilli and uh, like uh, do not disturb them, keep them in the zone. So when there are emotional scenes, I say code being activated, everybody follows. It's through. sort of shorthand for And it. then they don't, they don't disturb the actors or they give them a space. So those kind of things are required. Compared to normally when they're driving us mad. <laughs> for those that haven't read the book and, and therefore don't know what happens in terms of plot, um, without giving away actual plot points, how would you say the story progresses? Like a 747 taking off. <laughs> Seriously, I thought season one, season one is kind of like s slow. And that's what was good about it, because yeah. it had a pace to it and then it picks up. And I like the pace of this, this show, because it starts slow and then starts accelerating, because it's a time lock, right? There's a, there's a thing, uh, there's a it's big a problem. And it's a race against time and it's counting down, a bit like 24, you know. Every day is becoming tighter and more tense and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it's bigger, it's more intense. I mean, if you see the kind of makeup and damage that's being done to characters. So, it's emotionally more intense, it's dramatically 
faster, more intense, higher stakes, and all these questions that are raised in season one, quite intriguingly, are being tied up beautifully. Um, I honestly hadn't read the book either, mm -hmm. so I didn't even know, you know, why it's called Sacred Games because there wasn't much sacred game in season one. But that all comes in now in the second half. This whole now the season one brings in the problem, brings in yeah. the plot, the 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 premise of it, and then season two takes it forward because it's literally the the span is 25 days. So we were halfway through in season one. Season two takes it closer to the D Day, and you know that's the whole tension. That's why things escalate. And resolution, uh, resolutions in the past, and you know all these little things tying up to the past, tying up to the future, the present. I think it's the deepest piece of film I've ever worked in and the most artistic and, and entertaining even. It, I think it's the best piece of film I've been involved in in my life. And finally, um, you know, the, the one thing that season one did and the show did was was give us these characters that were so memorable that went on to become such beloved characters. A lot of them were sort of finished off in season one. Uh, are, are there going to be more that you believe will be as beloved? Um, are we going to miss the ones that, that don't come back? Well, anything is a giveaway, but uh, yeah, I mean, even I really loved Bunty's characters, Cuckoo's character, Karteka. But there are some characters maybe coming back you know, maybe there is something about them that's going to stay in the second season. And but there are some new characters yeah. and some wonderful actors. Um, also, some characters, you see them in a new light. In, because you see what brought them there or how did they arrive at this point. Right. It's not just Gaito and track that you're following that you go in the past and see. But there's also others that you see how, how did they arrive at this point. Right. And people's if, fathers, if they're evil, why are they evil? How did they arrive being evil? Absolutely. It's like wonderfully tied up and balanced. Cannot wait. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. All the best.